Senate Ansel, I apologize, but I'm not finding the document. Um, it, maybe Graham can point me to, to it. Uh, if I can take, uh, uh, Graham, do you have it easily, the, the document that you presented to us 54, to the conference committee? I did, I just sent it to Sorja, so. Okay. Okay, yeah. Um, I couldn't find the actual link to it, so I'm sorry, Sorja, sorry, sure. it was not as easy as just clicking the link, but. Um, yeah, I so can't it sounds find like about the conference committee online anyway. Um, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I, I couldn't find it. It sounds like uh, Representative Ansel did a great job of overviewing what I was going to sort of say. Um, <laughs> I think the, you hear it at least twice, though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have uh, as much of a grasp on these things as I do. Um, so, uh, as Representative Ansel discussed, the Senate put forward a proposal. Um, yesterday um, regarding the, the taxing um, of cannabis and it um, essentially what it boils down to is it's, it's a 20% it's a overall tax on, on cannabis and what that breaks out to is a 14% state excise tax and a 6% sales tax but of the 14% state excise tax 2% of that 14% or 200 basis points is what I've been saying to, to keep it a little bit clear is sort of set aside for localities. And so in effect, what that means is that 12%, a 12% excise tax will um, be available for state revenues and then 2% will be available for localities. And of the 12% the that's remaining for the state, um, as was in the, the House bill originally, 30% um, of that money would go to a substance misuse and prevention fund, and 70% would be allocated to a general fund. Um, there are state licensing fees in the proposal. Um, so to, in order to, to achieve a license and, and cultivate or manufacture or have a retail um, outlet, um, an individual would have to apply to the state for licensing fees. However, unlike in the House uh, bill, there are not. Graham, uh, yes. Jim, Jim has a question, and I'm going to I'm going to go to him so we can see if we can get that document yeah. up and take a second. Okay, Jim? Um, Graham. My recollection is when we heard about the financing breakdown and whatever from Stephanie way back when, um, that the prevention fund money doesn't become available until roughly a year after um, sales. Um, occur? Um, Is that still true? The great question. So I think the the committee is still trying to iron out how the, the that issue gets played out. The issue here, at play here is that the board needs to be up and running by fiscal or in fiscal 21 and 22 and they're going to be um, you know working creating a, a fee structure for the legislature to approve um, and so obviously they have a budget. And so what happens is that that board goes into deficit because there's no money um, flowing from the sale of cannabis to pay for that board or no fees being collected at that point. And so the, the cannabis control board goes into deficit um, for the first two years. So fiscal 21 and 22. Um, and I think if I remember right, the deficit beginning in fiscal 23, it was about 1.45 million. And then it's an outstanding question, I think, at this point, from in the Senate's proposal, what came forward is how exactly that gets covered. Um, so we're going to we're going to collect a certain amount of revenue from the excise tax. And the question is, which pot um, helps pay back that that deficit? There was some conversation in the committee yesterday that that all of the funds might pay back that deficit, but essentially that deficit needs to be repaid before any funds get um, any of their money. Um, so in theory, it could be, you know, the prevention fund pays a portion of it, the general fund pays a portion of it, um, and the local share, the local fund pays a portion of it, or even the education fund because it gets the sales tax pays a portion of it. But, um, there, that that, little, that wrinkle still needs to be ironed out. So it's a, it's a, it's a very good memory on your part. Graham, um, that document is up now. So um, yeah. since people 
may find it easier to take in if they see it while they're hearing it. Would you mind sort of just walking through the document? Yep. Um, Would it help to send Stephanie's document as well? So uh, not at the moment. I, let's let's start yeah. with this, and then we can look at Stephanie's because that's that next tier of issues. Right, right. Um, so just rewinding a bit, what has been proposed by the Senate and the conference committee is, is a fourteen percent state excise tax, but um, two percent of that fourteen percent, so two hundred basis points, um, would be carved out and dedicated to localities. Um, so what this means is that. 12% remaining of the 12% that's left over is, is state revenue. Um, and of that 12%, 30% um, would be allocated to the Substance Misuse and Prevention Fund and 70% would be allocated to the general fund. This is what was, uh, the, the sort of split here is what came out of the original house bill. Um, so that, that remained. And then there's, there's no bullet point here, but 6%, there is a 6% sales tax as well on, on these sales. So the cumulative tax rate on cannabis um, is 20% in this proposal. And then there are state licensing fees for individuals who establish retail outlets and who are cultivators and manufacturers. Um, however, unlike in the House bill that passed, there are no local um, licensing fees. Um, instead, there is the 2% um, of the 14%, the revenues that will be dedicated to localities. And as Representative Ansel was alluding to, the, the sort of outstanding issue is how that 2% um, pot of money gets um, allocated to municipalities. And that was not, there was- Graham, there I've was, got, Bill yeah. Canfield has a question. I'm, I'm sort of, give, Want to give them a chance to ask? Yeah, so I, wanted to, I was going to ask about that two percent. Is that for the localities who opt in? Um, I'm trying to remember. So the it's not it, that that's the issue. Yeah. It's not clear who it's for. Okay. It, yeah. Yeah, and there was some. I think there's. It still needs to be ironed out whether it's going to be an opt in or an opt out um, for localities. Um, but yes, it, it's it's unclear how that money gets gets allocated. Um, there was some talk about it being allocated by activity, but that was not, um, it's not clear exactly what that means. So I think the committee is still trying to, to iron that out. So Joey, Joey? Um, I just was wondering if we, I can't control this document. Can, can we scroll it up? Or, thank you. Perfect, thank you. Um, unless there's any more questions, I can just quick overview some of the revenues here. Yeah, and, and uh, there may be questions, so I'm going to interrupt as they happen. Yep. So if you want to, if you want to ask a question, put your hand, blue hand up, because I can't see people at the moment, and I will just jump in. Okay. Um, I've worked. I can't. All I can see is the document here. Um, the. the uh, so this, this table here is, is sort of the all-in revenue estimate. So this is the 14% excise tax plus the 6% sales tax plus any state licensing fees. Um, and so um, our assumption is that full retail sales won't come online until fiscal year 23. Um, we'll receive a little bit of fee revenue from those integrated licenses from the medical dispensaries in fiscal year 22, although that timeline is is going to be tight, um, and there's there's still some questions about how quickly the board can get up and running. So, um, to the extent that the timeline um, changes, these revenues will will absolutely change. But um, in the first year of retail sales in fiscal year 23, the midpoint estimate, um, what we think will be about 6.9 million dollars, growing to a fully mature market of about 14 million dollars in fiscal year 24, and then. In Fiscal year 25, it'll be $18.2 million. So that's sort of the all in revenue. It's all the revenue that we will collect from, from the proposal. And then if we scroll down a little bit, Sorsha, to the next two tables, um, this is how that money um, gets broken out to the various funds. So the first Robin table is the general. Graham, Robin has a question. Yeah. 
Sorry to interrupt. Just a quick question. Uh, is it safe to assume that those who have the local options tax that will have the 1% on this as well, not just the 6% sales? Yes. Yes, that's correct. Um, so in the first table here, we're looking at the general fund and what this revenue is, as a reminder, is after the 2% part is taken out for the localities of, of the 14%. So essentially we're looking at an effective 12% effective tax rate. Um, what is left over and that 70% of that leftover is the general fund. So um, again, we don't have retail sales till fiscal year 23. So um, that's when the money starts to flow. The midpoint estimate for the general fund is $2.6 million going to uh, 5.6 in 24 and then 7.4 in 25. The next table is the education fund um, with, with, from the 6% sales tax and as Representative Shai said, any, any town with local option sales tax that's already in effect would, would benefit from another 1% um, here. Um, the estimates 1.9 million dollars in 23, 4 and 20, 4.0 million dollars in 24 and 5.3 in 25. George has a question. Yeah, I don't recall the numbers that were in our proposal. Will you give those to us at some point here so we can compare? The revenue estimates? Correct. Oh, yeah, I can. I, can I mean, what's going down. to the general fund, what's going to the ed fund? Yes, I, I don't recall off the top of my head what they were. The, the tax rate, I think, is the same. Um, but well, the, no, the you, tax rate's not the same because we had 14%, not 12, that got provided. Uh, the, that's correct. Yeah. The, I'm, what I'm saying is like the overall tax rate is the, it, the actual money is not yeah. the same. Right. It's just the, the distribution is different. The distribution is different. The, yeah. the and, rate. Right. And the other issue, uh, not an issue, but Graham has updated the base. Um, yeah. So the base sales, the total amount of sales um, or total money that's coming in through sales is a little bit higher at this point based on new estimates. Not a lot, but a little bit. So it's hard to compare the numbers because they've shifted around a little bit in terms of the base. Yeah, exactly. But, um, importantly, what we, could sh what we can show is how much money is going to the general fund, how much money is going to the prevention program programs. Yeah. There's also timing issues here. We've pushed back the timeline relative to what was in the fiscal note um, that passed the house by about six months. So to account for the, the delay here, plus any another two months or so for the, the pandemic. So it's another difference. Um, Sorsha to the next page, please. So the, the first table you'll see on this page is what the localities, this is this local pot of money that we've been talking about. Again, it's unclear how this money is going to get distributed amongst the municipalities, but as retail sales come online, about $600,000 will be available in fiscal 23, 1.3 will be available in 24, and 1.8 will be available in 25. And um, finally, the misuse, the substance misuse, misuse and prevention fund. This is coming after the 2% local option is taken out of the 14% excise tax, or sorry, not local option, 2% portion of the, for the localities is taken out of the, of the 14%. We have $1.1 million in fiscal 23, 2.4, 24, and 3.2 and 25. So, so Graham, the question I, because it's, it's the one comparable that I think it, um, would make sense to me is if you look at the midpoint for fiscal 23, which is sort of the first money, using the current base that you're, you, you're using, what's, what's the, um, what would, what is for, I'm sorry, what is 30% of 14% that, what would that figure be for prevention if we weren't doing this 2% local share? 30% of 14%. <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm trying to think of that. 4.2%. I'm sorry? It's 4.2%, I believe. 30% of 14% is 4.2%, I believe. Oh, 4 point, right, but, it, but I, I'm wondering what the dollars are. We've got $1.1 million. 
going to yeah. prevention in as a midpoint for fiscal 23. If we didn't do the local share, what would that figure be? Um, it's about $310,000 per point on the excise tax. So if you didn't do the, the 2%, um, I'm just, that's, I'm talking, this is me speaking, I'm doing math out loud, but $310,000 per, per percentage point on the tax. And so if you didn't do the local option or the local tax, you would have $620,000 worth of available revenue. Um, and then 30% of that, uh, so about um, uh, $300,000 would be available for the prevention fund. Or twenty thousand dollars. Sorry, oh. or two hundred thousand dollars. Sorry, I think it's two hundred. Yes, that, it, it would be really good if we actually somebody could calculate that. We could actually see that figure because that's the part that I, um, I, I don't know how important that prevention money is to the house. Um, but the one point one million is less than whatever it was we would have targeted for prevention. And I just can't, I don't know what the different, the Delta is. Yeah, it's about $200,000, you're right. Okay, so that's one, so so under our proposal, that midpoint in fiscal 23 would be 1.3 million rather than 1.1 million. Is that right? Under you, under what passed the house, yes. Under um, what if there was no, if there was no two, 2% um, local, local share, yeah. Okay, That that's the, piece that's been elusive and it, it, it matters to some people. Okay. Ah, sorry, Jim, I'm looking at the table and forgetting to- That's look quite all right, thank you. Um, <laughs> sorry. I think the prevention fund is quite important, at least to me and a bunch of people who are in contact with me. And um, I'm not so much concerned about the dollar amount, although I would certainly agree that more is better. But my concern, as I expressed earlier, is if it's not available until 23, I think maybe we're going at the overall, um, the overall big picture a little backwards here. Um, I think prevention money, at least some, should be available from the get-go. And so I'm just expressing that opinion to let everybody, anybody out there know. And actually, I don't think that's a difference between the House and Senate. I think both versions would have it start in 23. Is that right, Graham? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, the, yeah. the prevention money is not available until there are retail sales. So right, under either version. It's under either version though. of the bill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I, 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 did you get through this or is it, I can't scroll it. So is there more? That is, that is the end of my document, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, are there other, um, any other questions about this idea? I mean, I, you know, having gone around it a bit, um, I have to say that I still like what we did. Um, those lo local licensing fees are actually able to be targeted at the activity itself. I think they're, it's clearer, um, you know, we heard from the municipalities that they were going to incur costs and licensing fees are the sort of typical way that we reimburse um, governmental agencies for the costs that they incur. Um, so to me, it makes more sense, but this is an idea I said, we'll look at it and consider it. And that's why I'm bringing it in here for people to help me think about it. Uh, Peter and Robin. Um, as I recall, when our proposal uh, came together, we um, allowed, so to say, that uh, as Graham has said, uh, the uh, local option tax would be in addition to whatever the state revenue sales tax is. So for those communities that have a local option tax, they obviously are advantaged. What I, uh, over communities who can't, who can't uh, uh, productively um, adopt that. Uh, what I'm hearing though is with the Senate proposal, uh, not only are those communities advantaged um, in that respect, but also they would participate in um, the divvying up uh, of the 2% of the 14. 
And I guess my uh, observation is that that even more um, the flip side disadvantages communities who are incapable or are just uh, not productive to have a local options tax. I'm wondering whether or not if that's the way we have to go, that uh, essentially the um, divvying up uh, is uh, net uh, in respect to the local option tax. So people don't get an add on out an add on, um, if you will, for those folks who have a local options. Just yes. seems inaccurate. Yeah. The, 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 way the, the way the proposal is structured at the moment, uh, the Cannabis Board will come back next year uh, with a proposal on how to distribute that money. Um, it might be that the bill, as the conference committee agrees on it, would set some guidelines for that, um, but doesn't have to. So the way it gets distributed will be ultimately decided by the next legislature. Robin, Emily, George. Um, thank you. Uh, staying with this, um, that sounds like the conference committee you said has not decided how how that two percent would be shared and how it would be distributed. But the the amount that I think I saw in Grant's uh, Graham's um, chart was that it peaks at one point eight million in fiscal year 25. So it's not very much money that we're talking about this 2% if it's at 1.8 million. Um, and then we also don't know what the licensing, the local licensing fees are, but it, I, I wouldn't be any. Because it's gonna be decided by the Cannabis Control Board. No. Yes, the, the local, local licensing, licensing fees are, are not part of this proposal. Right, but that was part of the house proposal. Yes. That we passed, right, and so that, but that was going to be determined by the Cannabis Control Board. So there's sort of still no. a lot of unknown. Was the Cannabis Control Board was going to make a recommendation the legislature would adopt okay. those. Okay. So yeah. either way, the legislature gets involved later on. But we do know that the 2% isn't very much money, and that's not until 2025. And it seems to me that being able to benefit the local communities that are willing to do this very specifically um, with the, through the local licensing fees makes me sort of come around to that as well, especially since there's not, this 2% isn't very much and we don't even know where it's going. Uh, Emily and George. Sorry, clarifying one more time, the actual amount of the local licensing fees under the house proposal would be decided by the Cannabis Control Board, not by the communities? No, or it would be decided, decided by each community? It would be decided by the legislature. The Cannabis Control Board will make a recommendation. The legislature will decide. There, there are real concerns about communities um, making those fees so high. That is um, my real concern. Great. Yeah. So that's, that's not, they, they won't be able to do that. Great. And that's our proposal. That's what we did way back whenever we did it. Uh, George. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the Senate proposal. Um, I don't like the concept that the abuse prevention fund is going to get less money, no matter how much it is. We're not putting enough in there anyway, as far as I'm concerned. Secondly, um, you know, the licensing fees are a fixed number, a predictable number. And as a municipality, I'm thinking, OK, if I have to add uh, police protection or, you know, other other things, I don't want to be stuck with a system that gives me money as it ramps up. I need to hire that person right in the beginning, which is what the licensing fees would, would allow. Um, I don't, you know, having it, the revenue ramping up to cover my costs really might be a problem. And it um, puts the municipalities in a funny position of rooting for more sales of marijuana because the more sales, the more local revenue they're going to get. Whereas the licensing fees can be calculated to cover the costs they're going to have, and they don't have any incentive to encourage more sales. So, you know, for those reasons, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of the, the Senate proposal. I like ours much better with the local licensing fees being calculated, you know, somebody doing some research and figuring out how much that those would need to be to cover the costs and then us having to approve that. Uh, are there other thoughts, other questions? Um, anyone? I, I don't know how big a sticking point this is for the Senate at this point, 
as I said, I think they uh, were starting to warm to the construct that we had in the bill. Um, or not warm to it, start, feeling less negative about it, I guess would be more accurate. Um, but um, so I just don't know how big how big a deal this is. Um, you know, we'd like to get a bill across the finish line. The real issues in the conference committee have to do with the seat belts and the uh, opt-in, opt-out, and other issues that are really not in the jurisdiction of, of our committee. So, um, so those may be bigger sticking points than this, but, but this is important because this is a structure that we're going to be living with for a period of time. Emily. I'm sorry that I couldn't watch the conference committee's testimony, but why does the Senate like the pooled idea? Well, the, the, the one argument that um, we haven't talked about here that um, Jeanette White made is that the licensing fees um, are not going to grow over time. Um, and the 2% uh, the presumably will as sales increase. And um, my response to that is this has never been viewed as a, as a revenue bonus for municipalities. What we, what we heard from them is that they were going to incur costs and we were trying to respond to that so that they wouldn't, um, they'd be able to recover the costs of, of enforcement and compliance, but, um, but not as a bonus. But that, that's, the, that's probably the biggest difference and the biggest reason why the Senate would like to see that. And won't the cost Sorry? Wouldn't the cost to municipalities grow over time too? They might, and you can, and we can always revisit the fees. Okay. And we do. Um, and so I, that also came up at the meeting. Okay. Um, and I appreciate what um, George said about um, disincentives or incentives for people to do more, but that's sort of how all sin taxes work, doesn't it? We have a right. we have very confused conversation about preventing something by taxing it and then benefiting from the excess um, of it. And I think in the end, just having some, you know, having this be out in the light instead of on the black market will help a lot regardless of where the money goes. Right. Are there other thoughts anybody have? Uh, thank you. Um, I, I, it's helpful to me, um, Some definitely some observations that hadn't occurred to me that I can take back. Um, and, and we'll hear more about it. Uh, George. Were you, I had yeah. the chat up, so it made it hard to uh, unmute. Um, the, the, um, I just want to say something about the, the other piece, and that is I hope very strongly that the House will hold firm on the seatbelt rule. We're going to have more, I mean, it's clear from data from other states, we're going to have more vehicle accidents. And, you know, I just, I just hope the House will hold very strong on that point. Yeah, thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Pat. Thanks. I, I'm probably going to get in trouble with my people for saying this, but I'm with George. Um, we worked very hard on the seatbelt issue in the house. And uh, I, I really think it's a deal breaker for the Senate. I mean, I'm a total deal breaker. That is saliva testing. They don't want any part of, mm -hmm. but um, I, I hope we hold strong on the seatbelt part. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, ready to move on? No, George, go ahead. Um, yeah, Pat, uh, we may have found something they like less than seatbelts in the saliva test. So maybe it's a trade off. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know how I characterize their level of not liking uh, between those two. I think, I think they're. Um, those are those are big big issues. So is the opt in opt out um, a big issue, uh, a, a big difference. So I think I think the money is going to be easier to resolve than those than those issues, frankly. Um, all right, uh, Tom Little, we are.